And what's the latest with Nordic? Well, the latest, I think, is that we have more solutions and more devices than we ever had before. This year, since last CES, we've launched new devices, and I think to we have multiple software solutions now. We can offer Bluetooth 5.0, Bluetooth Mesh, Thread, multi-protocol solutions with those uh, protocols. All this stuff, what is it? LTM, NB IoT, are you big in that? Well, we are going to announce uh, our initiatives in the seller IoT space. We had to have development going on for LTM and, and Urban IoT. On the 22nd of June, we're announcing our products in that space, which we've been working on for the last three years. So we expect that uh, the next big thing for us after Bluetooth will be seller IoT based on CAD-M and Narubin IoT. And you'll be, you be providing low-cost, low-power solutions for that? Low-cost, low-power, developer-friendly solutions for that, yes. And so is this how it looks like when your stuff comes out in these wafers and uh, all the Nordic semiconductors just in a bunch of wafers? I mean, we do uh, thousands of wafers every year and uh, typically they are you know, anything from a few thousand to 10,000 devices per wafer. Then they get cut up into pieces and, and put in plastic capsules and, and bonded out. But and it all starts on the wafer side of things. And, and one of these, how many uh, percent is good? How many is usable? Uh, you know, that's typically a, a trade secret, secret, right? Secret, right? But uh, we should be on the 90s. 90s, so you, you that's how you can get low, low cost? That's how you make sure that, first of all, you gotta have a manufacturing capability you, you need to have your manufacturing process under control to ensure that. Uh, but of course, yeah, the better yield, the more better price you can do on the device. And are there tens of thousands of different products using uh, all these? Uh, what is this penguin there? All kinds of. Uh, it's not a, maybe it's not a penguin, but all, all the. Like, if anybody's doing IoT wearables, they're all thinking Nordic. I think a lot of customers do. You know, we track design wins worldwide, and we think we're doing like 40 to 50 percent of all things happening in Bluetooth Low Energy. And I mean, it comes from all kinds of devices. There's not a particular segment necessary that went dominant. It is the innovation of our customers that comes up with ideas and crazy products that no one thought about. And some of these turns into big volumes. Uh, but I think our focus has been to do developer-friendly solutions, easy to work with, easy to start, get the prototype quickly and make great products. And uh, beacons, you're the leader in beacons. A lot of customers are using devices for beacons. I think they like our support we've had for years. We have always been early supporting high beacons, uh, Google versions, physical web. You know, we've had upgradability. So a lot of customers have been with us for a long time on beacons. And uh, all kinds of partners uh, from many different places making tiny little modules and some Swiss modules over here. Yeah, so you're seeing our, 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 our list of a number of our module partners, not all of them, but uh, but modules become more important for us from a smart home and industrial point of view, and more customers are doing modules. And I think we have, during the last years, made sure we built relationship with the with the, the most reputable manufacturers of modules. And what else are you showing at the booth? Do you have a, do you have some new security solutions? Uh, well, I mean, hardware our security or? Our latest, our latest ship, the 52840, is using the ARM Crypto Cell 310, which is, I think, is a gold standard in terms of uh, security. Implements in hardware a uh, whole range of uh, encryption schemes. So that's included in the 52840, our latest device here. Is that the Cortex M0? That's a Cortex M4F. M4F. Yeah, this device has a 1 megabyte of flash, 256K RAM. You know, it's the best, most powerful radio we ever built. It's the most secure device we ever built. It's our flagship device, which we're moving into production now in February. And it's been in, uh, in, in design with customers for the last years. We have a lot of expectations for this device. And when the ARM V8 M comes out, yeah. you'll be at the forefront of that, probably. I'm just guessing. Well, you know, we're always looking at new technology from ARM and all our partners. And, and we try to leverage what's new. You know, until we announce things, I cannot really say what we're going to put in. but. But again, we, we, we look to have leading edge products. You're busy, right? In, in Norway. Right? Yeah. In Norway. Yes. And uh, all, your, all, all your designers, your chip designers, are always busy with the next thing? Of course. I mean, we've announced things now. Uh, and we have a uh, show of devices that's coming now, which comes later this year. And of course, we're working on devices that's going to come in 2021 and so forth as well. So there's multiple projects working in different time stages. 
for, for various products. Everybody at CES, everybody, all the, I don't know, Bill Gates, everybody's talking about IoT, they're talking about wearables, and you're basically in the middle of it, so you must feel proud, no? You're like, I, I always like to say, that. we used to be do IoT for a long time, or we used to do a lot of uh, internet of my things, you know, the things that connected, the things you had around you, the wearables. But you know, some of the IoT is not that new in a way. I mean, it's been around for a long time, but as this business is now becoming bigger and bigger, I think we are in a very good position of capitalizing on it. How long time have you been doing IoT? I think we've been doing IoT for the last 15 years in some 15. way or another, right? So you've been doing before people call it IoT? I think so, because it's about bringing some data from a sensor to somewhere to process it in the cloud, acting on information, controlling things. It's, it's, it's the simple things in my view. That of course you made more complex. So the owner of ARM, he was on stage last year and he said, yeah. I want to ship a trillion ARM processors every year. Are you yeah. going to help him? Yeah, of do course. Do you have plans to do trillion, uh, like, uh, are you going to print them out like plastic based chips? Uh, what are you going to do? Is it going to be on the floor, in the walls? What's next? I think we're going to look more at similar to what it is today, to be honest with you. And I know that uh, they have big ambitions around ARM. We are contributing pretty significantly to that volume every year. But there's, of course, a long way to go for a trillion devices per year. How many are you contributing every year? Is it a secret? I think we're not announcing that number, yes. It's probably in the hundreds of millions, right? Uh, we do a portfolio of products, some with ARM and some without, and we typically do around 300 million devices per year. But there's a mix of, of all the Most is ARM stuff you're selling? Or? I wouldn't say that. Maybe not. I can't there's, say that. There's some other stuff too. Yeah. There's older stuff that before the ARM era, I'd noticed. All right. And uh, so it's a busy booth here and... Uh, Actually, right here we're at the... Uh, it seems that all the booths around here, like more than half of them are using Nordic, right? I think everyone's using Bluetooth as well. I mean, yeah, and of course, there's a lot of our customers around it. I think Bluetooth is really the big star of this show as well. You know, seeing them marketing themselves, there's a lot of things going on and Bluetooth's really come a long way of becoming a, a dominant standard in some way. And all around us, of course, people are using Bluetooth for all kinds of things, with our devices or sometimes our competitors' devices. I think Bluetooth is, of course, is great, but uh, is it becoming better and easier to use? Are you helping them to... You, you're part of the Bluetooth uh, consortium, and sure. you, you, do, do you, is one of the priorities to make things to to, to pair more easily, more seamlessly? I mean, uh, the question of pairing different. has always been a, a tough issue in the Bluetooth SIG, to be honest. I mean, there's always been the question about who's responsible for a solid pairing or not. I think we've come a long way with, uh, with Bluetooth in terms of functionality and making it better. Something we've done on our devices is actually to support NFC as well for pairing, which is, to some extent, making the pairing experience even better and easier to do. Uh, I wish I could say that it will be very easy, but it still is a little bit tricky to get the pairing going, which apply, you know, this applies to all wireless standards in some way.